So you decided to study abroad. That is a great idea. Let me show you how to get started. Hey everybody, my name is Paul. I'm with the Keystone Education Group. We connect students with universities. And today, let's go through our starter guide on how to study in another country. I'm proud of you for making this decision. I know it's a big choice and it's a huge first step that you've already taken. Before we get started, as always, all the information for this video can be found down below. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, like this video. Otherwise, let's get started. Now to begin, is it going to take a little bit of effort to study in another country? The answer is yes. It will take you a little bit of effort to study in another country, but it's nothing that a little bit of planning can't solve. So whatever challenges you may face, don't get discouraged. It's all part of the process and a part of the journey. So stay positive and keep your eyes on the prize. My question to you is, do you know where you want to study? If you don't know where you want to study, no problem. We have a video on the top 10 countries to study in the world for 2024. The card will be in the top right. Where you choose to study will affect how you plan. If you are a degree seeking student, then of course you'll also have to factor in what program you want to study in as well. If you're doing your bachelor's degree and are considering studying abroad for an exchange semester or two, your school will probably have an international or a study abroad office where they can help you choose where you can study abroad. But at some point, you'll probably ask yourself, can I afford to study abroad? This is the number one question that everyone asks themselves. Where you decide to study will, of course, factor into your costs and your financial situation will, of course, factor into where you decide to study. You'll have to factor in things like your flights to and from that country, your tuition fees, your accommodation costs, your transportation costs, and just the general cost of living for that country. Studying in another country can be expensive, but you have options. Depending on where you're from and where you're looking to study, you could potentially get a temporary job abroad, you can apply for scholarships, you can apply for financial aid, or you can try saving up some money by working now. Keep in mind though, when you're applying for a school and for a study visa abroad, typically they'll ask you for financial documents to show that you are able to aff afford the tuition fees and to live abroad. So once you know where you want to study and how you'll pay for it, let's get into some of the more exciting stuff. First, you'll have to find a university or college in the country that you want to study in. If you're doing an exchange semester, your school will have choices for you to choose from. You'll need to take a little bit of time to do some research and to find out what schools are where. If you go into the description below, you'll find some links for you to get started. Otherwise, Google's your friend and probably ChatGPT as well. On top of all that, you'll need to consider your hobbies and your personal interests as well. If you're outdoorsy or if you love food or you love fashion, you want to take into account destinations that can cater to your interests. As you're researching, you want to keep a list of schools that you want to go to. Why a list, you might ask? Well, it's always good to have choices and there are so many amazing places around the world. Some of you might even start falling in love with the place before you even get there. But this next part is very crucial, so listen very carefully. From this point forward, you need to be very organized and you need to do your due diligence. So before you do anything else, take your list with all your schools and you need to do two things. First, you need to write down the application deadlines for each school that you're interested in. And second, you need to write down all the requirements that the school has for you to apply especially the documents that they need. Application deadlines will vary from school to school and from country to country, but typically application deadlines for international students are earlier to account for you needing to get a study visa from the government of that country you would like to study in. While you're creating your list, one of the things you're going to notice on a lot of checklists is English test scores. If you're from an English speaking country or if English is your native language, you don't need to worry about this. If you are from a non-English speaking country or if English isn't your first language, you will need to take an English test. For those of you who are ready, it's good to do it now so you don't have to do it later. It'll save you a lot of stress down the road. Once you're done your research and you've created your list, from this point forward, things are going to be moving pretty quickly. So remember, you got to stay agile and to do your due diligence. With your application deadlines, you're 
going to prioritize the schools that have the earliest application deadlines so you don't miss them. And you're going to start collecting your documents right now as well. Certain countries have application systems where you can actually apply to several schools at once. You want to consider using these if they're available. Typically, a school's website will let you know if it's possible. But if you can, start as early as possible. Start collecting your documents and start applying. For your documents, it'll vary for every school, so you'll need to double check that. But typically, you'll need the following. Your transcripts of your grades, test scores, financial documents, a valid passport, and motivational letter. So keep in mind all of the different documents that a school may require from you and keep a copy of them somewhere on your computer. Most people have a habit of applying to a school one or two weeks before a deadline. This is not a good idea at all. Things get really busy for the school one or two weeks before an application deadline and if you're applying and you need help it might be pretty difficult for you to get the help that you need to apply to that school. One of the big benefits of starting early is not only can you get a hold of somebody at the school if you need help but typically these schools want to be speaking with you so if you can speak to them early that might actually give you a little bit of a better chance to get into the school as well. And please don't hesitate to contact schools to speak with them. They usually want to Hear from you. During your application phase, we do actually recommend starting to apply for scholarships and for financial aid as well. There are many places to look for scholarships and there are three types to look out for. School scholarships, government funded scholarships, and scholarships from organizations. And don't overlook the small scholarships either. Every amount counts for you to study abroad. Okay, are you still with me? By this point, you've probably applied to most of the schools on your list already and Now's the time to wait. One by one, you'll be getting decisions from schools, whether it'll be an offer or a decline on your application. When it comes to offers, there'll be two types that you'll see, an unconditional offer and a conditional offer. An unconditional offer is basically if you accept the school's offer, they'll accept you as a student. A conditional offer is the school will require you to provide one or two things in order for them to accept you as a student. Typically, these will be things like a complete transcript, test scores, or etc the school will let you know. Most people will receive a conditional offer since they're mostly applying before they finish school. It will vary from school to school, but you'll definitely need to apply for a study visa from the government of that country. From this point forward, whichever school you choose, they'll be helping you every step of the way to help you get on campus to study. And just like that, we've gone through our starter guide on how to study abroad. Depending on where you're from, it'll vary for everybody, but just remember, you've already taken the most important step, which is deciding to study abroad in the first place. Thanks for watching this video. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.